Sitting in the shadow of the mighty Yellowstone National Park, the mountain ranges and surrounding areas that comprise Grand Teton National Park are often overlooked. But don't let the cragged peaks and retreating glaciers fool you, because Grand Teton has so much more to offer than its scenic mountains, though they are awesome. Let's take a look at one of America's most underrated national parks. The actions that would lead to the creation of Grand, Middle, and South Teton Mountains, as well as many other mountains in the Teton Range, began around two and a half million years ago with the use of a metamorphic rock called gneiss, which can be seen across much of the Teton Range today. Magma squeeze cracks in the gneiss, forming igneous granite seen on the highest peaks in the range including Grand and Middle Teton. Over time, sedimentary rocks piled on top of the base layer until around 10 million years ago, when the Teton Fault became active, causing the layers west of the vault to rise to the soaring peaks we see today, causing the layers east of the fault to be buried deeper underground. The fault is still active today, and it still occasionally generates major earthquakes. The other major force responsible for giving the Tetons their jagged peaks is glaciers. Around 200,000 years ago, during an ice age, large sheets of ice from the Yellowstone Plateau to the north buried the landscape in over 2,000 feet of ice. As the glaciers melted, they left behind open areas of gravel and boulders known as moraines. Glaciers also created many of the park's major lakes, such as Jenny and Jackson Lakes. When looking for places where glaciers once were, look for moraines covered with conifers, trees that grew in the moist soil created by the gravel and boulder debris left by the glaciers. With the receding of glaciers came the arrival of people to the Tetons, including tribes such as the Shoshone, Crow, and Nez Perce, who lived in the northern part of what is now the National Park. For several millennia, the American Indians lived in isolation. It wouldn't be until the latter half of the 19th century when fur trapper Richard Beaver Dick Lay and his Shoshone wife Jenny arrived in the Teton Valley that would mark the first known appearance of Europeans in the area. Lay and Jenny Lakes were named after Richard and his wife respectively. Following the arrival of the Lays in the Teton Valley were many homesteaders who looked to strike out upon the land of the area. From Idaho came settlers who established the town of Grovant in the 1890s, more commonly known as Mormon Row. Another memorable settler to the area was Bill Menner, who moved to the area in 1892, where he lived along the Snake River and operated a ferry across the river until the state of Wyoming built a bridge in 1927, even though Bill had already left the area in 1918, and gave his property in the ferry to a woman by the name of Maud Noble. Maud was instrumental in the creation of the National Park because she hosted a 1923 meeting and her cabin that would eventually lead to the creation of Grand Teton National Park. Included at the meeting were the superintendent of Yellowstone National Park, Horace Albright, and John D. Rockefeller Jr., who had begun to purchase land in the area, including some from the J.Y. Dude Ranch, one of many such ranches in the area. Both Rockefeller and Albright were successful in convincing President Calvin Coolidge about Grand Teton's potential, and in 1929, Grand Teton National Park was established. Coming in from any highway offers fantastic views of the majestic mountains, and as you get closer, the smaller landforms surrounding the mountains start to become noticeable. Exploration can begin at one of two visitor centers located at Coulter Bay and Jenny Lake, as well as the Craig Thomas Discovery Center near the town of Moose. From there, avid hikers can row up and down the steep stretches of mountain along the Teton Fault, while visitors seeking a more mild experience can traverse the shores of the park's many glacier-carved flakes. Perhaps one of the best views in the entire park is at the Snake River Overlook, where one can view the Tetons, glaciers, lakes, and rivers all in one panoramic vista that leaves some visitors awestruck. One of the park's more popular trails, the 4.8 mile Hidden Falls Trail, is excellent for those who wish to get a taste of the park's beauty up close. Traveling along the south shore of glacier-carved Jenny Lake, the trail culminates in a spectacular 200 foot tall waterfall hidden amongst the landscape. Geology, geography, history, and biology meet in one of the National Park Service's best offerings, Grand Teton National Park. Thank you for watching. If you'd like to learn more about America's National Park, feel free to subscribe, and we'll see you next time.